Welcome to the final mini lecture in the series on the American Industrial Revolution, labor movement. As businesses begin to grow in power and influence, the workforce is forced to band together and demand better working conditions and higher wages. Vocabulary for this lesson, collective bargaining, Samuel Gompers, American Federation of Labor, Eugene Debs, the Industrial Workers of the World, and Mary Harris Jones. With businesses on the rise, labor unions began to emerge. Northern wages generally were higher than Southern wages and workers of all types joined together to demand better working conditions and higher pay. Most workers have 12 hour workdays and six day work weeks. They perform repetitive jobs of mind numbing tasks with no vacation, no sick leave and no injury compensation. In order to survive, families needed all the members of the family to work, including the children. Sweatshops and tenement workshops were the only jobs many women and children could get because they required fewer skills, but they also paid the lowest wages. The National Labor Union is the first large-scale national labor organization, and in 1868 the National Labor Union got Congress to give eight-hour days to civil servants. The NLU's focus was on linking existing local unions. Local chapters of the NLU do reject black members, so there's a creation of the Colored National Labor Union. The Noble Order of the Knights of Labor became open to women, blacks, and unskilled laborers. The Knights supported the eight-hour workdays, equal pay, and arbitration. Collective bargaining became an important tool for negotiating higher wages, better conditions, and shorter hours. The unions would go on strikes to close shops in order to give unions more power. When the power of the labor unions increased, this leads to increased political power as well. Two major types of labor unions began to emerge. First we see craft unionism. Craft unions included skilled workers from one or more trades. Samuel Gompers helped found the American Federation of Labor, or the AFL. Strikes organized by the AFL were successful in winning higher pay and shorter work weeks. The second major type of labor union is industrial unionism. Industrial unions included skilled and unskilled workers in an industry. Eugene Debs formed the American Railway Union, which also used strikes. Many labor activists turned to socialism. They felt that government control of business and property would lead to equal distribution of wealth. The industrial workers of the world, also known as the Wobblies, formed in 1905. The Wobblies were organized by radical unions and socialists and did include African Americans. Industrial unions also gave unskilled workers dignity and solidarity. Japanese and Mexicans formed the Sugar Beet and Farm Laborers Union in California. The Wyoming Federation of Labor supports Chinese and Japanese miners. With the popularity of labor movements on the rise, strikes begin to turn violent. The government and businesses will see strikes as a threat to the economy. The Great Strike of 1877 happens when the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad strike begins to spread to other rail lines. Governors are saying the strike is impeding interstate commerce and federal troops are sent to intervene. In the Haymarket Affair, 3,000 members gather at Chicago's Haymarket Square to protest police brutality. Violence ensues and eight were charged with inciting a riot. These eight were convicted. Public opinion begins to turn against the labor movement. When Pullman laid off 3,000 workers, and cut wages but did not cut rent, the workers went on strike in the Pullman Company strike. Pullman refuses arbitration, so the strike turns violent and the federal troops are sent in. Eugene Debs is jailed and most workers are fired. Many of them were blacklisted. Women also began to unionize. Women were barred from many of the unions, so they united behind powerful leaders. Mary Harris Jones was the most prominent organizer in the women's labor movement. Jones worked for United Mine Workers and led the Children's March. 
Pauline Newman is another organizer. She organized the International Ladies Garment Workers. In 1911, the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory fire resulted in public outcry. And in 1913, the Patterson Strike, the women's gained union leadership roles. Management and government began to apply pressure to the unions. Employees forbid unions. They forced new employees to sign yellow dog contracts, which is an agreement between an employer and an employee in which the employee agrees not to be a member of a labor union. And businesses begin to hire prison labor at lower wages. A few questions for you to answer. Why did workers form unions? A. To decrease wages. B. To eliminate child labor. C. To increase working hours. Or D. To improve working conditions. In a short essay question, how did labor leaders use socialism to solve the problems faced by workers?